bullying. It's a word that sends shivers down spines and evokes memories of school hallways filled with whispers and pointed fingers. We see the bully, larger than life, casting a shadow over their victim. But what do we really see? A sneer, a shove, a cruel laugh, these are just the outward expressions of a deeper struggle raging within. Take Charlene, for instance. Her anger and frustration are palpable. Or Alvin, whose smugness and overconfidence mask a deeper insecurity. To truly understand bullying, we must dare to look beyond the surface, to unmask the bully and delve into the intricate workings of their psyche. This isn't about excusing their actions. It's about understanding them. Because only by comprehending the why can we hope to find solutions to the how. Behind the mask of aggression and bravado lies a world of insecurity and pain. Bullies often target others to compensate for their own feelings of inadequacy. They crave control because they feel powerless in other areas of their lives. Their actions, while hurtful, are often a misguided attempt to validate themselves and establish a sense of belonging. Imagine a child who feels invisible at home, overlooked by their family. School becomes their battleground, a place where they can Demand attention, even if it's negative. Or consider the teenager struggling with social anxiety who uses bullying to mask their own fear of rejection. These are just glimpses into the complex inner workings of a bully's mind. The environment plays a crucial role in shaping a bully's behavior. Family dynamics, peer pressure, societal norms, these all contribute to the development of aggressive tendencies. Children who witness violence at home or experience neglect may learn that aggression is an acceptable way to solve problems and assert themselves. This is not to excuse bullying, but to understand its roots. By recognizing the complex interplay of psychological and environmental factors, we can begin to develop more effective strategies for prevention and intervention. We must move beyond simply punishing the bully and address the underlying issues that contribute to their behavior. Only then can we hope to create a world where empathy and compassion replace fear and aggression. One of the most common threads running through the psychology of a bully is a deep-seated need for power. This isn't about wanting to rule the world, but about craving a sense of control in a world that often feels chaotic and unpredictable. Bullies often feel powerless in other aspects of their lives, whether it's at home, in their social circles, or within themselves. This lack of control can be incredibly frustrating, leading to a buildup of anger, resentment, and a desire to regain a sense of agency. Bullying becomes their outlet, a way to exert influence over others and experience a fleeting sense of dominance. By targeting those they perceive as weaker, they create a power imbalance that allows them to feel momentarily on top. This hunger for power isn't always conscious or malicious. Sometimes it's a subconscious drive, an instinctive reaction to feeling small and insignificant. Bullies may not even realize the root of their behavior, only that it brings a temporary sense of relief from their own internal struggles. Understanding this need for power is crucial for developing effective interventions. It's not enough to simply punish the behavior. We need to address the underlying emotional needs that fuel it. This requires creating environments 
where young people feel heard, valued, and empowered, where they can develop healthy coping mechanisms for dealing with insecurity and frustration. The need for power often goes hand in hand with a desire for control, and bullies seek this control in the reactions of their victims. A terrified look, a tearful retreat, a whispered apology, these become twisted forms of validation for the bully. They create the illusion that the bully has successfully manipulated the situation and asserted their dominance. This illusion of control is intoxicating, providing a temporary escape from the bully's own feelings of helplessness. By dictating the actions and emotions of others, they create a world where they are the ones calling the shots, where their words have weight and their desires are met. However, this control is ultimately an illusion, a fragile facade built on fear and intimidation. True control comes from within, from a place of self-awareness and emotional regulation. Bullies, often lacking these internal resources, rely on external validation to feel powerful, creating a vicious cycle that only perpetuates their own insecurities. Breaking this cycle requires helping bullies develop a more realistic and healthy sense of control. This involves teaching them how to identify and manage their emotions, how to communicate their needs assertively but respectfully, and how to build healthy relationships based on mutual respect, not fear. Section three, the price of insecurity. While bullies may appear confident and self-assured on the surface, their actions often stem from a place of deep-seated insecurity. They may feel inadequate in comparison to their peers, struggling with academic pressure, social anxieties, or family conflicts. These insecurities can chip away at their self-esteem, leaving them feeling vulnerable and afraid. Bullying becomes a defense mechanism, a way to overcompensate for these feelings of inferiority. By putting others down, they attempt to elevate themselves, to create a false sense of superiority that masks their own internal struggles. This need to protect their fragile ego often manifests as hypersensitivity to criticism, a constant need for validation, and a tendency to lash out at anyone who challenges their carefully constructed facade. They mistake aggression for strength, control for respect, and fear for admiration, failing to realize that true confidence comes from within, not from the subjugation of others. Addressing this underlying insecurity is crucial for breaking the cycle of bullying. This involves creating environments where vulnerability is met with support, not exploitation, where young people feel safe to express their struggles and seek help without judgment. By fostering a culture of empathy and understanding, we can help bullies confront their own insecurity and find healthier ways to cope with their emotional needs. Section one, echoes of home. The environment in which a child grows and learns plays a pivotal role in shaping their behavior and bullying is no exception. Family dynamics in particular can have a profound influence on a child's understanding of power, control, and aggression. Children who witness violence or experience abuse at home may come to view these behaviors as normal or even acceptable ways of interacting with others. Imagine a household filled with constant yelling, 
where disagreements are settled with threats and intimidation. A child growing up in this environment may learn that might makes right, that the loudest voice or the most forceful action wins. They may internalize these unhealthy patterns of behavior, carrying them into their interactions with peers and manifesting as bullying. Even in families where physical violence isn't present, emotional neglect or inconsistent discipline can also contribute to a child's propensity for bullying. When children lack consistent love, support, and boundaries, they may seek attention and validation through negative means, such as controlling or intimidating others. It's important to note that not every child who experiences a difficult home life will become a bully and not every bully comes from a troubled background. However, understanding the powerful influence of family dynamics is crucial for identifying risk factors and developing targeted interventions that address the root causes of bullying, both within the individual and within their family system. Section two, the pressure to conform. Beyond the family unit, the broader social environment also plays a significant role in shaping a bully's behavior. Peer pressure, in particular, can be a powerful motivator, especially during adolescence when social acceptance and belonging are paramount concerns. Young people are highly attuned to the social hierarchy of their peer groups, constantly navigating the complex rules of popularity and acceptance. In some cases, bullying becomes a currency of social power, a way to climb the social ladder or maintain one's position within the group. A child who feels insecure or unpopular may resort to bullying as a way to impress their peers to gain acceptance or admiration by aligning themselves with the dominant group or by targeting those who are different or perceived as weaker. This pressure to conform can be incredibly strong, leading even children who know better to participate in bullying behavior. They may justify their actions by telling themselves that everyone's doing it that it's just a harmless joke, or that they'll become the target themselves if they don't play along. Combating this aspect of bullying requires shifting social norms and creating a culture of kindness and inclusivity. This involves empowering bystanders to speak up against bullying, promoting empathy and understanding, and celebrating diversity rather than using it as a weapon of exclusion. Section three, the digital mirror. In today's digital age, the influence of media on bullying behavior cannot be ignored. The internet, social media, and video games have become ubiquitous parts of young people's lives, shaping their perceptions, values, and behaviors in profound, ways. While these technologies offer many benefits, they also present new avenues for bullying and aggression, often blurring the lines between the real and virtual worlds. Cyberbullying in particular has emerged as a pervasive problem, allowing bullies to reach their victims 24-7, often anonymously and with a wider audience. Social media platforms, while intended to connect people, can become breeding grounds for cruelty and exclusion, where hurtful comments and rumors spread like wildfire, amplifying the impact on the victim. The constant barrage of images and messages promoting unrealistic beauty standards, material wealth, and social status can also contribute to feelings of inadequacy and insecurity, fueling the cycle of bullying. 
Young people bombarded with these idealized portrayals may feel pressured to conform, leading to comparison, competition, and a distorted sense of self-worth. Addressing the role of media in bullying requires a multi-pronged approach involving media literacy education, responsible technology use, and parental involvement. Teaching young people how to critically evaluate media messages, identify cyberbullying, and protect themselves online is essential for creating a safer and more positive digital environment. Section 1, The Schoolyard Battlefield. Schools intended as havens of learning and growth can sometimes become battlegrounds where the dynamics of bullying play out with heartbreaking clarity. The hallways, classrooms, and playgrounds transform into stages where bullies seek validation and victims struggle to remain unseen. The school environment with its complex social hierarchies and pressures can either exacerbate or mitigate bullying behavior. For some bullies, school becomes an arena where they can assert their dominance and gain a sense of control. They may target classmates who are different, whether it's their appearance, academic abilities, social skills, or family background. The school Yard becomes their stage and the other students, their unwitting audience. The presence or absence of strong leadership can significantly impact the prevalence of bullying. Schools with a zero tolerance policy for bullying, where teachers and administrators are trained to recognize and address the issue proactively, tend to create a safer and more supportive environment for all students. However, when bullying is ignored, dismissed as kids being kids, or handled with ineffective punishments, it sends a message that such behavior is tolerated, allowing the cycle of aggression to continue unchecked. Section two where silence is consent. One of the most insidious aspects of bullying is the role of the silent bystander. These are the individuals who witness bullying but choose not to intervene, whether out of fear, apathy, or a belief that getting involved will only make things worse. While their inaction may stem from a place of self-preservation, it inadvertently contributes to the problem by creating a culture of silence and acceptance around bullying. When no one speaks up, bullies feel emboldened, interpreting the silence as tacit approval for their actions. Victims, meanwhile, feel isolated and abandoned, left to cope with the abuse on their own. This sense of isolation can be incredibly damaging, leading to feelings of worthlessness, hopelessness, and a belief that no one cares. Breaking this cycle of silence requires empowering bystanders to become upstanders. This involves teaching them how to recognize bullying, understand the impact of their inaction, and develop the skills and confidence to intervene safely and effectively. Bystander intervention programs, which educate students on how to support victims, report incidents to trusted adults, and challenge bullying behavior in a constructive manner can be highly effective in creating a culture of respect and accountability within the school community. In section three, we explore breaking down the walls Creating a school environment where bullying is not tolerated demands a multifaceted approach that tackles the issue from various angles. It's not enough to simply punish bullies after the fact. 
We need to cultivate a culture that proactively prevents bullying from happening in the first place. This involves fostering a sense of community and belonging for all students, regardless of their differences. Schools can implement programs that promote empathy, teach conflict resolution skills, and celebrate diversity, thus creating an environment where students feel valued, respected, and connected to one another. Teachers and administrators are pivotal in setting the tone for a positive school climate. By modeling respectful behavior, addressing bullying incidents promptly and fairly, and creating open lines of communication with students and parents, they can nurture a culture of trust and support where bullying is less likely to flourish breaking down the walls of silence and indifference requires a collective effort from everyone in the school community, students, teachers, administrators, parents, and the wider community. By working together, we can create learning environments where all students feel safe, valued, and empowered to reach their full potential. In section one, titled Cultivating Empathy, the heart of the solution, we delve into addressing the complex issue of bullying. This challenge requires more than just punitive measures. It demands a fundamental shift in perspective, a cultivation of empathy that allows us to see beyond the act itself and understand the human hearts involved. Empathy, the ability to step into another's shoes and truly comprehend their feelings, is the antidote to the poison of bullying. Imagine a classroom where empathy is not just a word on a poster, but a lived experience. Children are taught to recognize and understand their own emotions and to extend that understanding to others. They engage in role-playing exercises read stories from diverse perspectives, and participate in discussions that challenge prejudices and promote compassion. This cultivation of empathy doesn't excuse bullying behavior, but it does create a space for understanding the underlying factors that contribute to it. When we teach children to see the world through the eyes of others, to feel the pain they inflict, it becomes harder for them to engage in acts of cruelty. Empathy is not a magical cure, but it is a powerful tool for prevention. It's about nurturing a generation of young people who are not only aware of the harm that bullying causes, but are also equipped with the emotional intelligence to choose kindness and compassion instead. Section two building a fortress of support, policies and programs, creating a safe and supportive environment where bullying is not tolerated, requires a multi-layered approach that combines clear policies, effective programs, and a commitment from all members of the community. Just as a fortress needs strong walls and vigilant guards, so too does a school or community need robust systems in place to protect its most vulnerable members. Clear and comprehensive anti-bullying policies are the foundation of this fortress. These policies should outline unacceptable behavior, establish reporting procedures, and detail consequences for those who engage in bullying. But policies alone are not enough. They must be paired with effective programs that address the root causes of bullying and promote positive social interactions. Peer mediation programs, for example, can teach students how to resolve conflicts peacefully and respectfully. Mentoring initiatives can pair 
younger students with older peers who can provide guidance and support, creating a sense of belonging and reducing feelings of isolation. And social emotional learning programs can equip students with the skills to manage their emotions, build healthy relationships, and make responsible decisions. Building this fortress of support requires a sustained effort and a commitment from all stakeholders, teachers, administrators, parents, and community members must work together to create an environment where bullying is not only unacceptable, but unthinkable. Section three, a community united, shifting the tide. Combating bullying is not just the responsibility of schools or families. It requires a collective effort from the entire community. Just as a single raindrop may go unnoticed, but a united storm can shift the tide, so too can a community united against bullying create a powerful force for change. This community-wide approach begins with raising awareness about the issue. Open dialogues, community forums, and educational campaigns can help dispel myths about bullying, highlight its devastating impact, and encourage bystander intervention. When everyone understands the problem and their role in addressing it, we create a culture of intolerance for bullying in all its forms. Local organizations from youth groups to faith-based institutions can play a vital role in this effort. They can provide safe spaces for young people to connect, develop social skills, and build self-esteem they can also offer support groups for victims of bullying and their families, providing a lifeline during difficult times. Shifting the tide against bullying requires a sustained commitment to creating a community where empathy, respect, and kindness are not just aspirational values, but lived experience. It requires us to challenge our own biases, to speak up against injustice, and to stand up for those who are being targeted. Section one, unmasking the pain. Behind every instance of bullying, there lies a story, a story of pain and security, and a desperate attempt to reclaim power in a world that often feels overwhelming. Bullying is not just about physical aggression or hurtful words. It's about the erosion of self-esteem, the crushing weight of fear, and the silent screams of those who feel powerless to stop it. As we peel back the layers of this complex issue, we begin to see the threads that connect us all. The bully, often a victim themselves, acting out of their own woundedness. The target, bearing the brunt of the abuse, their spirit slowly chipped away. And the bystanders, caught in the crossfire, their silence speaking volumes. Unmasking the pain behind bullying doesn't excuse the behavior, but it does allow us to approach it with greater understanding and compassion. It allows us to see the humanity in each individual involved, and to recognize that true change requires more than just punishment. It requires healing, empathy, and a collective commitment to creating a world where everyone feels safe, valued, and respected. Section two towards a kinder tomorrow. Bullying is a solvable problem, but only if we are willing to confront it with the same unwavering determination that we bring to other social ills. It requires a multifaceted approach that addresses the individual, the family, the school, and the wider community. 
We must equip young people with the emotional intelligence to recognize and manage their own emotions and to empathize with the experiences of others. We must create schools and communities where kindness is celebrated, diversity is embraced, and bullying in any form is met with swift and decisive action. This is not a utopian dream. It is a call to action. It requires parents who are actively involved in their children's lives educators who are trained to recognize and address bullying, and community leaders who are willing to prioritize the well-being of all members. The journey towards a kinder tomorrow begins with each one of us. It begins with our willingness to see the humanity in everyone, to challenge our own biases, and to speak up against injustice wherever we encounter it. Let us be the generation that breaks the cycle of bullying and creates a world where every child feels safe, valued, and empowered to reach their full potential.